Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Today is Tuesday, April 5th. Um, that means actually means two things in Wisconsin. First, uh, and, and maybe most important, uh, it's Taco Tuesday here at Wills. Uh, it also is election day, so maybe you should vote as well. No, I'm just kidding. That's very important too. Please do vote. But before you do, stay here and uh, learn a little bit from our vendor partners here uh, on Taco Tuesday. Um, today's uh, presenters uh, are here on our uh, uh, agenda. Uh, we're going to start off today with uh, Scott Williams uh, from Infobase. He's joined here by Naomi Bates as well. Uh, and with that, Scott, um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that you can start sharing yours. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, we can. Well, thank you, Jeff, for the introduction. Um, just briefly, um, I have uh, been with Infobase now for about uh, a year and a half. I came over from recorded books. Um, I came over at a great time because um, Infobase has begun to invest more heavily into uh, meeting the needs of public librarians. And today I wanna to talk to you about a, a few products that I think would be appropriate for libraries to consider as products to support their population of parents that, that homeschool uh, their, their children. Uh, but just real briefly, I wanted to see a kind of a complete list of the InfoBase products. Uh, we've been around since uh, 1941. Um, the original product uh, is now called World News Digest. It used to be called Facts on File, a name that uh, many of you that have been librarians for a while probably remember uh, in its print form. Of course, it's gone digital along with, with everything else or many other things. And um, you know, most of our databases have been acquired from that, that period until today. But uh, as I mentioned, today's focus is going to be on five different products that support um, homeschooling families. Um, and when I say that, um, you know, I'd like to broaden that beyond just the homeschooled uh, children to the parents that are part-time um, educating partners uh, of, of the schools, those that are looking to help their children through the summer slide. Uh, we used to buy, you know, bridge programs uh, for the kids during the summer uh, so that they would... Uh, not fall behind and, and stay sharp uh, coming into fall. So uh, there's a lot of reasons to consider these products, not to mention the fact that um, your um, patrons include educators. And uh, if they have library cards, there's no reason that they can't uh, pull on this information. So I'm gonna start out with the first one, which is called Mailbox. And I'm just gonna jump over to the product and show it to you that way. The product has, um, 52,000 uh, different items in it. And again, it's a product that some of you may recognize. Uh, we purchased it. It was still a print um, service. And I've had a number of librarians tell me that they've subscribed to it in the past and they would get um, great appropriate uh, content on a monthly basis. Uh, now it's all digital and people can access anything they want at any time they want. Um, you can see here there's, there's featured content, but a quick way to maybe use the product would be to come into the um, search area and say, I have a, a child that is going into the, the fifth grade next year. Maybe they were uh, struggling with math. Sorry. I can quickly go to math. I can quickly say rising fifth grade. I'm gonna say, okay, before you go out and play, you're at least going to do a workshop, a worksheet, and I can you know, quickly do a search here and narrow down a lot of different options that I can print out. Some of these um, options are just ideas of things that you can do on a daily basis around the dinner table, around the house to encourage you know, reading skills or math or whatever you're looking to do.
Uh, the second problem product you may have heard about before, uh, I'm sure it's been presented to you, but uh, just for kids uh, streaming audio collect, uh, streaming video collection. Uh, that is a collection of over 11,000 streaming video products that focus on uh, the younger patrons. Um, as you look at the highlighted videos up front, you'll see some of it and said, oh, well, that's been around for a while. Uh, we actually update this regularly. Uh, we have content that we've added in 2022, but this is some of the more popular content. And to see the quality of the content, if you do decide to trial the product, I do suggest that you, um, you know, look at some of the publishers and producers that we work with, um, such as Weston Woods and Reading Rainbow, good products for improving reading skills. Also, you'll note that we've pulled out collections for the parent or the uh, librarian that wants to, to focus on um, different areas of interest, maybe uh, do something on cultural inter interest. You can see that there is content for math. And again, as we talk about the uh, parent of the homeschooled child, um, of course they have to buy curriculum and follow that curriculum, but a lot of these children um, get done with that early and um, they're looking for supplemental content. Um, there's also students that maybe struggle in certain areas and some supplemental content like this would be to their advantage. Access Video um, is the next product that I wanted to bring to your attention. This is obviously would be appropriate for adults, but also um, older uh, students um, in the high school area. There's over 43,000 simultaneous unlimited access um, videos that cover everything from um, classic films to um, documentaries. Um, the Kim Burns content is in here. So uh, a broad, deep uh, collection uh, that would benefit, again, any parent or any library that's looking to offer uh, streaming video. I'll just mention on these two video products, our big competitive advantage here is that we're simultaneous unlimited access. So if you subscribe to this, you don't have to worry about the pay-as-you-go model or worry about um, budgeting it throughout the year. Um, the price up front will allow patrons to access it in the library as well as remotely uh, as much as they want. Um, anyway, anywhere they want. And um, you do have public performance rights, but those extend only for the public library. Um, the next one is World Almanacs for Kids. And uh, this is just a general database for upper elementary and middle school students. We also have one World Almanac for Kids Elementary that's for the the younger children, but it's just a, a product that, that works on engaging um, younger populations with learning. Um, and it, it'll feature um, engaging content up front. There's videos, there's games they can play. You can look through the topic list. Or if they just have a, a book report, if they're like, oh, I have, or not a book report, but I have to do a, a report on, you know, a planet. This is a, a great source for content that is readable for them, understandable for them, um, and, and directed towards um, their, their reading level and interest level. And then the final product that I wanted to call attention to was um, issues and controversies. And this is um, an opportunity to help people of any age um, start looking at things from, from different perspectives. And you can see that it's a product that's updated on a regular basis and it has you no know, content that is um, up to date uh, with the, the issues that are being talked about in the news. You can also pull um, information on an A to Z basis. You can pull it by age.
Well, that's better than them ghosting us that's forever. Just, yeah, that's just weird. I wonder what I should make there. But um, I wanted to pull up and search. Well, you can pull it by by age level as well, but uh, I'm I'm uh, not finding that, that uh, search button right off. But um, the issues that are covered are the big issues, um, things that, like I say, anyone would benefit from from looking at uh, from two different sides. But at that, I'm going to pause and see if there's any questions about the services. Anything that you'd like to see that I didn't show you from that initial list? Scott, I'm keeping an eye on chat and the Q&A uh, boxes. Folks, if you have questions or anything that you'd like uh, to have for Scott, please feel free to drop them in one of those places. I haven't seen anything yet. When I was just talking about, I was looking for the, the age-oriented um, uh, button that I was looking for. I thought this would be very appropriate uh, for you know the, the library patrons to have these topics um, easy to pull up front and center. Uh, good uh, dinner table conversations are, are good conversations for the classroom for, for any teacher that was looking for um, topics. Scott, we've got so, one, one question in the chat saying, can you show that initial list again? Not sure if that means like the first, oh, maybe, yeah, that seems like maybe that's what Laura means. Laura, if this isn't the list you were looking for, let us know. Was there a product in particular that you had a question about, Laura? High level, um, we, we cover most of the, the history um, databases. Uh, we have a rich collection of, of literature led by the Bloom's literature, uh, literary criticism that everybody knows from the print that's been expanded into digital and includes films. Um, not only can you study the Shakespeare plays, but you can watch the Shakespeare plays. Today, science is also very popular in the public libraries, particularly as it applies to um, doing experiments and that time of year when science fairs come about. A lot of librarians have complimented that aspect of that particular product. So anyway, my last thing I wanted to do um, is to just make sure that you know Naomi and uh, like I say, I'm kind of filling in today, but this is your, your real um, rep going forward and, you know, jot down her um, contact information if you like. Um, she will also be reaching out to you uh, with her contact information just so you have it in your outlook in case you need to reach out to her. Do you have anything you want to add, Naomi? Um, I just added the infobase.com website to the chat and you uh, at the top of it, you will see all the video that we also offer. Well, I was worried about running out of time and it looks like I'm gonna leave a minute or two uh, on the table, but uh, rather do that than, than take more than my share. So Jeff, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for joining this us. opportunity. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Scott and Naomi from InfoBase. Um, and uh, as they said, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Naomi. Also can reach out to uh, your Will's uh, staff rep as well. We can put you in touch with uh, the right person. Um, thanks again, InfoBase. And now we are going to switch gears uh, over to our next presenter. Uh, we're joined uh, here today by Shannon Glant from TDS Health. Shannon, are you here on the line with us? I am. Can you hear me? 
Ah, yes, I can. All right, I'm going to stop my screen share to free it up for you to do your own. Okay, great. There we go. Can you see my screen okay? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. I'm really excited to be here with you for Taco Tuesday. Um, my name is Shannon Blant. I work for TDS Health. Um, our company has been in the business for over 30 years, and uh, we offer a variety of healthcare resources, some that you may be familiar with, um, including our StatRef ebook database, um, as well as a really wonderful anatomy product called Primal Pictures Anatomy TV. But today I'm just going to talk a little bit about board vitals. So uh, board vitals is an exam in board prep resource that um, covers over 70 different healthcare specialties. And it also covers every level of healthcare education. So um, it's really going to be unique. It's going to be customizable for your specific library. I'm just gonna scroll down here to show um, all of the various question banks that are offered. So we offer over 30 different medical board exam question banks for residency programs and also for physician recertification. Uh, we cover all of the medical student exam banks, including the USMLE, step one, two, and three, and shelf exams. Um, various of uh, the podiatry exams. Uh, we do have the largest collection of nursing question banks as well on the market offered anywhere from NCLEX to the nurse practitioner banks uh, to some clinical focus banks. Uh, dentistry, so we have uh, the dental and dental hygiene, as well as some other various uh, allied health and um, other specialty banks for physician assistants, pharmacy, uh, and so forth. Um, so some of the nice things um, about Board Vitals that it offers a couple different um, areas for both your students or residents, as well as your faculty and the library. So for the students and residents, uh, they can use it throughout um, their schooling for um, kind of uh, self-study and um, really learning um, within their specialty. And then it's mainly used for exam prep. So when their specialty exam or board is coming up, they can really hit this product hard and um, learn everything they're going to need to pass their board or exam. Um, all of the questions follow the formatting, the content outline, um, and basically everything they need to pass that board exam. We also have a lot of the um, question banks now that also have the same interface that they're going to see on that actual exam. So it's really giving them a true life um, exam opportunity to see if they may pass or not pass that upcoming exam. For the library, um, we offer fully a la carte. So you're welcome to purchase just one exam. You can purchase multiple exams. You can purchase a package. It's fully a la carte so you can customize based on your needs and your budget. So we're really welcome to work, work with you to help you with your budget. And um, also as just being part of Wills, you do get a 10% discount right off the bat. Um, and just so you know, we do have multiple uh, libraries in Wisconsin and all over the country, many libraries that currently purchase this resource for their programs. Uh, a subscription would be either annual or it can be multi-year to save money. Um, access is always unlimited and we can work with you, um, you know, for your needs for access for your programs, your faculty and your students via IP, email domain, um, roster registration, whatever really works best for you. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the product, just give you a quick look. 
So as I mentioned for the student or resident, they can use it for self-study, for exam prep. We also have some functionality for the library as well as faculty. So there's full usage analytics, both for your question banks as a whole, as well as broken down by individual user and class. And um, faculty also has the opportunity to create and send custom exams to their students and residents, kind of based on the curriculum and what they're currently learning. And we do have a lot of faculty that takes advantage of this. There's a wonderful scheduling feature in there. They just start at the beginning of their year and kind of schedule out weekly exams to be sent. Now, Board Vitals is constantly enhancing the product, um, building out their content, making sure it's um, applicable still, following content outlines. And they're currently in the works of expanding this administrative area for the library and for your faculty to offer even more analytics, um, as well as some additional features, all based on feedback from faculty. So it's really going to be a product that faculty can use, um, build into their curriculum, and um, we do receive a ton of wonderful feedback uh, from these programs. So just quickly, uh, I wanted to touch on how a resident might use this. Product. So I'm currently within the adult gerontology acute care nurse practitioner bank. Um, they have this is the resident or student dashboard. So when they log in, they're going to be able to create a custom quiz. They can see their performance, um, both how they're just doing based on different subject areas, as well as how they're doing. Uh, compared to everyone else within this question bank across all Board Vitals accounts. So it kind of gives them a, a good opportunity to see how they're doing, as well as to see areas they may need to improve. Um, just some question status on the right. And then on the bottom, they're going to have a list of every quiz they've taken. If they happen to pause it or have to close down in the middle of their quiz, they can just log in and continue that quiz from here. And then there's a assignments tab where they'll find all of the quizzes that have been sent by their faculty. So what they'll come in and do is create a new custom quiz. And quick note, there's a free mobile app that most of the students or residents will use. It's just quick and easy. They can even use it offline if they don't have Wi-Fi capabilities and then it syncs back up easily um, with the main product as soon as they're back in Wi-Fi service. So when they create a quiz, they're just going to come to this page and choose some options to create the custom quiz. Um, now for this example, being in the adult Jero and PBank, they have the option of choosing the interface they wanna use. So the enhanced learning is the standard Board Vitals interface. But this AACN board exam interface is what they are actually going to see when they take this exam at their end of their education period here. They can choose quiz mode. So we have open book, closed book, a combination of both. Um, we're going to just choose this kind of open book so I can show you the special studying uh, features available. And question status, a difficulty level, subject area, which is nice in case they're focusing on one specific subject at the moment. Um, we'll just choose a couple, how many questions they would like on the exam, and whether they want it timed or untimed. Uh, the timed is nice because it'll assure that they can complete their actual exam. Uh, so it will allow them to choose the time they have per question or the time for the entire exam. When they're done, they just start the quiz. And it'll come up with a question. There's a lot of figures and media and information uh, within these. They read through, answer their question. Uh, since I'm in the study mode, I can check my answer. I'm incorrect. So I want to know why I'm incorrect. I just choose the explanation. 
So this is where the additional study comes in for the students or residents. They can see what the correct answer is, learn more about it, and see what a little bit more on the incorrect answers as well. And I was just talking actually to um, a chair of a program earlier today, and he said this area is extremely important for this, the students or residents to learn. So they have some great explanations, peer comparison, difficulty level. They go on to the next question, choose an answer, um, check my answer, it's incorrect, read up on it. And when they're done, they just click grade and submit. Gives them a broad overview, shows them their response time uh, compared to how quickly they need to answer questions on the actual board or exam they need to take. So just kind of a nice feature, breakdown by subject. So that's the basics of the dashboard. Um, there's also administrative features, which I don't have time to get into today, but it really breaks down uh, usage, as I mentioned. If you purchase multiple banks, it allows a faculty member to go in and create a class of just their students so they can easily see how their students are doing and not have to view anyone else's information. So uh, we only have a couple minutes left. Um, I don't know if there was any quick questions or comments uh, before we close down. I haven't seen any coming through yet, uh, Shannon, but uh, I'll remind the audience, please do uh, drop any questions you might have into the chat or the Q&A box. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, uh, Jeff has all my contact information. Um, and then um, you feel free to reach out to me anytime. I can support you, I can answer questions. We can do a demo kind of customized to your needs. Uh, provide some pricing details and any other information you need. So I'm available anytime for really any questions you have about any of the TDS Health products. Thanks, Shannon. I'll, I'll um, remind everyone that uh, Will's uh, partnership with TDS Health is a uh, uh, order direct arrangement. So our members will make their purchases directly through Shannon, taking advantage of the discounts that uh, she's offering to Will's members. But uh, of course, feel free to reach out to me. I'm, I will put you in touch with Shannon. I'll make sure you've got her contact information if you, if you don't have it already. So um, thank you so much for joining us today, Shannon. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Hope to hear from you soon. All right, so I'm going to take us back to our uh, middle step here just to introduce our next presenter. Uh, so joining us today from Vaxite is Susan Gall. Susan, uh, are you on with us? Oh, I see you there. I am here. All right, Susan, uh, you've done this before. I'm going to go ahead and stop my share so that you can start yours and, and then. All right, thank you. I will get this going and hi everyone. I'm Susan Gall from FactSite. FactSite is a collection of databases from Lincoln Library Online. We have something for the youngest researchers, primary grades through adult. So I'm gonna just give you a quick overview today and I encourage you to ask questions in the chat if you have anything you'd like me to cover in more detail. Let's get started. With FactSite, you can subscribe to individual databases or you can bundle groups of databases together and save. We also offer discounts if you're in a school district. If more than one school in a district subscribes, we offer district discounts as well. All of that information is available through Wills, so just contact Wills for pricing information and they'll have everything you need to get a subscription going. FactSite databases include, I'm going to start with the lowest reading level. So this first one, FactSite Lingo, includes English and Spanish in a really cool and engaging interface. So this is a great resource for English language learners. And it's also a great resource for Spanish lear learners because it presents academic vocabulary. Students who are learning a new language often learn conversational vocabulary, but academic vocabulary like 
terminology about the planets as the infobase um, presenter was talking about or about landforms, waterfall, canyon, things like that. Those words don't come up in everyday conversation. So this is a great place to help your students acquire academic vocabulary in a kind of a fun in interface. FactSite Lingo exactly parallels our FactSite 123, which has 13 modules from science, social studies, and English language arts. And it's the foundation of a bundle that we call the K-8 to bundle, which is for, guess what? Kindergarten through eighth grade. And the, in FactSite 123, every entry features an icon at the end that's, and I'm gonna show you this in a minute, that says, step up to a reading challenge that links seamlessly to our database at the next reading level. FactSite has four biography databases. Some of you may have owned Biography for Beginners, Lincoln Library of Sports Champions, some of these titles in print when they were in, available in print. As you all know, libraries are no longer enthusiastically purchasing A to Z um, reference works anymore. So we've all transferred to the online database, which has been terrific because it allows for ongoing updating, um, adding new content regularly, and um, it's really been exciting for us. So we have four biography databases for your students to look at. We have a mythology database. This is, of all of our databases, this is the most heavily used. We don't have the most subscribers, um, but the schools and public libraries that subscribe to mythology know that they have an audience that likes to research mythology. This includes Greek and Roman mythology, and mythologies of the world. There are three different reading levels for mythology, so this is a great one for you to um, come back and test drive. We have three history databases. American history, this is a general reference. It was first um, a print product sponsored by the Smithsonian, and we've um, updated it, converted it to a fully searchable database, and we've of course added significantly to the content there. We partnered with Omni Graphics. They have a 35 volume print series. Each one covers a different topic like the Lewis and Clark Expedition, Battle of Gettysburg, um, Japanese American internment, different periods in American history where there was something significant that changed our society. And our newest addition to FactSite is Milestone Documents Online. Again, this is a partnership with another publisher, the Schlager Group. 1,700 primary source documents with scholarly commentary, context, teacher resources, and quizzes. We also have science and technology, countries and cultures, and general um, essential information, which is a general reference. Now I'm gonna switch over and take you to FactSite Live so we can um, take a look at the FactSite databases themselves. You see here we've um, when you when you are a FactSite subscriber, your school or library will be greeted on the at the top of your FactSite homepage if that's the way you'd like to have your subscription set up. Um, let's see. I'm going to use Biography for Beginners to demonstrate to you some of the features of FactSite. Um, let's. We have a number of different ways for people just find content. The keyword search here at the top can be used. And if your subscription includes a bundle, more than one fact site database, when you type a term here into the find box and you use the pull down menu and ask for the search to be undertaken across all the databases, it will bring up results from every database where that topic is covered. So Thomas Edison, for example, would be covered in a number of databases. Let's, I'll just show you how that works. I typed Edison here, search in all. And the search results show us that the first one is a Thomas Edison patent application from Milestone Documents. You get a little bit of an overview and the word count. The next one is Thomas Edison from our Shapers of Society by, um, database. Here we have biography for beginners biographies, and then as you go on, you'll see other entries where Thomas Edison is mentioned. Now, if we go back to biography for beginners, 
That's the keyword search. We also have an alphabetical index, which is great to use for browsing if your student or researcher doesn't know who they like to do their report on or who they like to read more about. They can just browse using the alphabetical index. In addition, we have the special topic indexes. And these reflect frequently studied topics like explorers. Many schools include a unit on um, the world explorers, colonial America, our presidents and first ladies, Supreme Court justices, etc. Students also enjoy browsing this section. We include many, many, many of the popular children's authors. Every year, as soon as the Caldecott and Newberry Awards are announced, we get those people added to the database right away, within a week. Um, all the profiles follow a similar format, and this is true with FactSite in general. We always have an abstract at the top that gives you information about why you care about the particular topic or person. And then the, the text follows with different features to keep the reader reading. Our screen designs are simple, and that's for a reason. We worked with a reading expert who encouraged us to keep our line lengths short, to feature a lot of white space, and to minimize distractions. So we don't have a lot of opportunities for the researcher to click away from what they're reading. Our design is, um, has been created to keep the reader on task and to keep them reading. Some, you can see here, this is a seven page article. The default view is page by page, but some students prefer to view the article all on one page and use um, scrolling. So for every fact site database, this feature is available. Go up to the upper right corner, click on one page, and that converts the article to a single page featuring scrolling. When you get to the end of every fact site article, we have a MLA 9 citation. We're about to add other citation styles, AP and Chicago. We're also fully integrated with Noodle Tools. If your school has a Noodle Tools subscription, the student just needs to click here and the citation will be prepared for import into Noodle Tools. We have our reading level algorithm. This is our own unique fact site reading level algorithm, and we feel it skews a little bit high. Most of these biography for beginners entries would be perfectly readable by a fourth grader. This one says reading level 5.2. You know, reading level takes into account sentence length, vocabulary, the number of phrases, etc. And so when you do it with an algorithm, it's hard to control um, the interest level as well. Every fact site article has this feature. Would you like to comment? When you click here, it takes you to an email box. This sends an email directly to our managing editor. The emails come to us anonymously. We don't. We have no way of identifying individual students or individual users, but we would know what fact site subscription account was um, the comment came from. So if someone sends in a suggestion that we we take action on, we would let the librarian contact know. Somebody suggested a good example was at the time of the Biden administration, um, Biden inauguration, excuse me. We had many, many requests for a profile on Amanda Gorman, which we definitely thought was a great suggestion and we took action on it right away. That was something that came to us and we could then notify the librarian and say, Amanda Gordon is up and ready to be researched. So we encourage all of our subscribers to use that feature. We also have audio read along in every fact site um, entry. You just click here and it enables the audio read along. And by clicking on these three little lines, you can customize the way the audio read along works. The defaults include a certain reading speed, a certain highlighting style, and you're able to control that for your individual students or um, library patrons. We also have Add to Google Classroom, and FactSite is integrated with. ClassLink, Canvas, Schoology, other major um, learning management systems that are being used in school districts today. Um, let's see, other, other indexes. Here's an index by country of birth. If you were in Texas, this is an um, index of the notable people in the Texas um, social studies standards. 
And there are always special topic indexes in every database. I want to show you that step up to a reading challenge also that I mentioned a minute ago. So in our animals um, module, this is a very popular module. You see here the article, it's an 11 page article I mentioned before, we can convert that to one page. Page down. And when we get to the end of the article, and these articles all follow a standard format. Subheadings um, help the student gather information. The text features are important for students to learn about because standardized tests and reading in the real world will require that they become familiar with that. So we try to teach them how to find information. When you get to the end of the article, oh, I forgot. I neglected to include science in my um, set up today for you, for you. So I want to use this one instead, pardon me. When you get to the end of the article, and if I had remembered to do science, we would have seen this for the animals database, step up to a reading challenge. This takes you seamlessly to the biography for beginners, women who made a difference section, biography on Oprah. So for every single module in step in Facts site one, two, three, we have step up to a reading challenge. Um, and all the modules link to various databases here in FactSite. At the bottom of the FactSite page, we have getting started videos. This includes videos on the audio read along, different search options, the different display options, noodle tools, send a comment, adding FactSite to Destiny, the step up to a reading challenge, and some information on our bundles and on FactSite lingo. We also have an extensive collection of um, lesson plans that teachers and others can draw on for support in using FactSight. I think I'm just almost out of time. Anybody have any questions? Or would anyone like me to feature something else in um, one of the FactSight databases? I will show you one other thing, the milestone documents. Um, if your school has AP history or participates in National History Day, we did this key documents index, which features the documents that include all the scholarly analysis categories. Milestone documents includes American history, world history from ancient times to the present. So if you have AP US history, we can click on one of these. Here's a minute against slavery addressed to Germantown monthly meeting. We come here, Martha Palante from Youngstown State University is the contributor who did the scholarly analysis. And then all these categories of analysis are featured here. So if you have um, social studies primary source document research to support. This is a great place to come. FactSite offers trials. You're welcome to request a trial. Email me and we can get you set up with a trial. At this time of year, we're offering trials through the, through the end of May because we know this is a time of year when you're um, planning your budgets for next year. We welcome you to ex request an extended trial, and we look forward to introducing you to, and your students to FactSite. If there aren't any other questions, I think my time is just about up. And Jeff, thank you. Jeff and Wills, thank you so much for making this opportunity available. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Susan. Um, <clears throat> I will uh, I'll remind everyone uh, watching, if you have any questions about Fact site or really any of the resources uh, we're showing today, please reach out. Feel free to reach out to us here at Wills uh, or reach out to Susan uh, directly. Um, thanks again, uh, Susan and Fact site for uh, presenting here at Taco Tuesday. I just remember that I forgot to share my Wisconsin testimonial. So if anybody would uh, okay. like to see those, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. I'll be happy to share them. I think I, I probably shouldn't take any more time, right, Jeff? But we can, I'll be happy to share Wisconsin testimonials if anybody would like to see them. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to just add, for the last time today, I'll bring us back to our agenda.
uh, just in time to uh, hand things over to our fourth and last presenter for today. Uh, and that is Megan joining us from Creative Bug. Megan, I'm going to turn off my screen so that you can share yours. Thank you, Jeff. All right, I will share my screen and I actually am going to go ahead and put my email address and a link to our service trial into the chat. So feel free if you'd like to, um, if you haven't yet had an opportunity to access the service trial for Creative Bug, um, feel free to do so. I would be happy if uh, to get any questions you may have about our trial. And what I will say is that I think going last for Creative Bug was the right choice here because um, it's it's very straightforward. You're going to see as I share this demo, um, rather than multiple different databases, we just have one. And it is, um, so hopefully, I know your brain is just almost full, but I'm going to share a little bit about Creative Bug and what it is. So Creative Bug is a an online DIY arts and crafts platform. And we offer thousands of different video classes in different categories. So you can see here, hopefully you can see, um, the platform itself. This is the, the landing page. You can see that it's welcoming me back. And again, this is something that when you create an account as a patron or as a librarian, you'll see you yourself welcomed back to the platform. And you can just jump right in from here. I'm going to navigate you through the menu, um, the personal menu here, as well as uh, the menu of classes and different things that we have to offer in the, pl in the platform. So I can go right into my recently watched. And one thing that's nice about this personal menu is that it takes me to anything I click in this menu will take me to my full personal um, account area. So I can just scroll up and down and go to any of these tabs here. Uh, I don't have to go back up to this menu. You can add a photo if you like. You can go to your recently watched classes here. I can see classes I've completed, classes that I'm partially um, through watching, and then I can, I can see my watch list here. One thing I really like to point out is that you can actually share your watch list, and this is a great feature for libraries because Creative Bug does come with public performance rights, both for in-person programming as well as for virtual programs that you may be hosting um, on your library's website. So I can click this link, and it takes me to a link that I can share. I can share it on social media. I can share it via email. It's just a great way for you to get patrons involved and aware of the different crafting classes that you may be watching, um, any themes that you may be promoting for a given time frame. I can see my gallery. You will note I have nothing posted in my gallery as of right now. Um, I haven't any, uh, I haven't completed any classes, haven't completed any projects, and I have not posted anything. However, you have the opportunity to post here and you can favorite different images that you want to save to your gallery. You can click on the community tab. It will tell you who are the new creative bug crafters. Um, it will show you who you've recently viewed. Um, in my recently viewed, these are teachers. Um, and then I have one trial account here. There's some inspiration below. And then I can just go to my account settings here. One thing that's great about Creative Bug is it can be as interactive or not as you like it to be. If you're someone who really likes to interact with the community, you want to comment, you want to post, that's what we have available for you. If you prefer to do it on your own and just keep it to yourself, that's an option also. Um, you can see some information about me here. I can put in a bio if I wanted to. I could add links to my personal site. Um, I can add preferences. So if I want to see more um, interests pop up in the suggestions area, I can do that and just save those here. I'm just going to click on that Save Changes button. 
I can take a look at my profile preferences. So again, I can make things private if I want to. Um, I don't want to share, you know, my location. I think that's automatically disabled for library patrons. So um, just something to note, you, you have a lot of privacy options here. And this will always say active courtesy of whatever library um, is supporting the subscription. So patrons don't need to worry about billing or any solicitation of personal subscriptions. I'm going to take you back to the main screen. That's just a little bit of an overview of the account menu. And we'll dive in and talk about some of the classes that are available. So if I hover over this classes menu item at the top, you can see there are different categories that pop up. Some of the ones that I like to highlight right off the bat is this one for kids. Um, this is a really fun way for young children, families, students um, to interact with Creative Bug. It provides a great opportunity also for youth services to bring some crafting um, ideas into the library. If you don't have the ability to hire someone from outside to be an expert on a particular topic, but you still want to have these fun programs in your library, you can absolutely get inspiration from Creative Bug and use these videos to guide the class and the program at your library. Some of these um, do require a little bit more adult supervision than others, but there are some really great fun uh, projects here that can just be done at home, you know, with just very simple, um, I like to point this one out, very simple materials, pom-poms, pipe cleaners, a little bit of glue and some felt, and you can make these cute little love bugs. Um, so just very simple. Once you click on the class, you get another menu here at the bottom of the video. You can see the description, look at the chapters and see how long each chapter is. You can see this particular uh, project is pretty quick to complete, so it doesn't require a lot of time. You can see a material list here. You can look at the gallery, of course. These are the completed projects and people get very creative with what they do. There's a class discussion down here where people can comment. You can make notes. So in this particular class, there may not be anything complicated enough for you to need to take notes, but as you get into more complex classes um, with skills that may be a little bit more advanced, you can take notes about what you want to remember. This is where I can add this class to my watch list. Just click that, whoops, click that button. I think I clicked it twice and that's why it didn't show up. And then there is here um, an option for you to download the transcript. Right here, you can download that transcript or you can just read it at the bottom. When I press play on the video, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to actually hear the audio, but I did just want to point out here that there are closed captions available for all of the videos. So this is something typically if I were going to be hosting a program at a public library, I would always want to make sure that the closed captions are, are visible and available. Um, I know that when I used to host movie Friday afternoon, it was like one of the main things I had to make sure we had the captions on. There is the option here for full screen as well. And you also do have the opportunity to Chromecast here from within the video. So just a couple of little features. You can also do a 10 second rewind. So if there's a skill that is being demonstrated that you're unfamiliar with and you want to watch it again, you can rewind it. And typical um, timestamps and things like that are also available. If I click this little grid of boxes here, it just brings up the remaining chapters of videos. So if I just wanted to skip around and make sure that I'm, you know, I've got my materials together. I don't need to watch the introduction. I just want to see what the assembly looks like. You can click right on that. I'm going to go ahead and exit full screen here. And I'm just going to point out a few other features that Creative Bug offers, because I know I'm coming to the end of my available time here. I will point out, um, if I click on this classes link here at the top, it will bring up 
a list of all of our classes. It automatically sorts from most recent to least recent. You can change the the cha you can change the way that it sorts. So if you wanted to look at older classes, you could click here. You can click on this to make the most popular ones come to the top. And of course you can filter as well. So if there are particular themes that you want to look at, say you're hosting something for quilting at your library and you wanted to do something just based on blocks, you can click on those filters and it will just take you to those specific um, classes that are related to the ones that you've selected. You can also select a specific instructor. If you know that there's an instructor that you particularly enjoy, you can, do that. You can actually click on the instructor's name as well to get a little bit more information about that person and some links to their crafting um, world, their online crafting world, and the gallery as well shows up here at the bottom. We do have some really fun daily practice series as well, and these are uh, updated regularly, just as regularly as the, the normal classes are. The most recent one that we have launched is 30 Structures in 30 Days, a daily practice in bookmaking, which again could be perfect, perfectly aligned for libraries. So Faith um, is the teacher and she has constructed these different, these little books. It shows you how to do it. You'll see when you click on the chapters page, we're on day five. And then tomorrow, day six will launch. It tells you when the launch date is. It tells you exactly how much time you're going to spend each day on these daily practices. Um, 18 minutes, I would say nine, close to 19 minutes, is toward the top of the, the length that we typically see. Uh, most of these are going to be less than 15 minutes of time that are dedicated. And you, you'll see as we go down the list, it's really less than 10 for the most part. So if someone wants to do something on a daily basis, this is a great way to just get a little, a little piece of time every day dedicated to your crafting practice. We also have some resources here. Our calendar lists our upcoming classes, and you can see that the ones that have been released are linked here. So you can just go ahead and play those to uh, directly from this menu. You can add something to the calendar. If you're interested in an upcoming class, it will give you a reminder when that class is launched. Our classes are also, I'm going to actually go back to my home screen. If you wanted to um, find out what the materials are for an upcoming class, you'll see it has a little new banner in the top. Even though I'm able to click on the class page, um, none of the videos except for the overview are available for me to watch until the release date. And, but I can still access the materials. So if I wanted to gather those materials prior to the release date for the class, I can do that here. Back up in our resources tab, you'll see we, can, we also have a link to all of our instructors. We have a blog. We have CBTV, and CBTV is more of a behind the scenes, tips and tricks, little short videos that you can watch. We also have videos um, featuring our new classes for each month. We do have a pattern library. The pattern library is not necessarily associated with any of the classes. Um, these are just extra patterns that are available for download. And then we also have some class collections that have already been curated. So if you're interested in hosting, for example, a program series at the library, you can just click on these class collections. They're already put together and you can use these as a jumping off point um, to help inspire your patrons. Um, it looks like I only have one minute left, so I do want to leave some time for questions. And um, uh, does I don't know, I don't see anything in the chat, but Jeff, um, are there any questions from anyone about Creative Bug that I can answer? I haven't seen anything come into chat or Q&A, but please do uh, pop anything in there uh, if you have those questions. Um, as I've said in each of our sessions, of course, you can reach out to Wills, uh, you can reach out to Megan, any of us would be happy to help you out with any questions that you might have. Absolutely. And I am just going to, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen, but I will put a, um, 
a link to our libraries page in the chat here as well. If there are pricing inquiries, you can just go ahead and fill out that form on our website. It will come directly to me and or you can just email me, whichever you prefer. Uh, but there's a little bit more information on our library site if you do happen to have some questions about um, specific anything specific to libraries. So thank you all so much for your time and attention today. I really appreciate having the opportunity to participate in Taco Tuesday. Thanks for joining us, Megan. It's, it's nice to have you here. Um, and, <laughs> Good to be here. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to have you back again sometime. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Jeff. All right. Thank you. And let me just take us over to kind of our wrap-up phase here. Hopefully everyone's seeing my last couple of slides here. Thank you to all of our participants for coming uh, today to uh, learn about uh, some of our vendor partners. Thank you to our vendor partners for uh, presenting for us today. Uh, as always, Taco Tuesday will be back again next month on May 3rd. So for those of you uh, who come every month, we're looking forward to seeing you again uh, and spread the word. The last thing I'll say, uh, I made a joke about it earlier, but I am serious. Do get out and vote if you're in Wisconsin. Um, you know, that, that, that matters a great deal, even more than Taco Tuesday, if, if you can believe it. So thank you all for coming, and uh, we'll see you again next month.